This program is brought to you by Real Estimate, Australia's number one property value estimate. Get your real estimate today on realestate.com.au. Welcome back. Taking a look now at the auction numbers for this week. Across the country, there are just over 2,700 auctions scheduled. Most of them will be held across Sydney and Melbourne, with Sydney holding 825 auctions and Melbourne 1,130. Across Queensland, there are 269 scheduled, with Brisbane holding 123 of those. South Australia has 133, with 123 in Adelaide, and Canberra will hold 93 auctions. Now to our most viewed properties of the week. 18 Tenant Parade in Hurlston Park, New South Wales, is a four-bedroom, two-bathroom home with a lock-up garage. The property offers its original facade of sandstone and brick construction that extends into the rear living area designed by award-winning architects. The design employs creative timber work with vaulted ceilings to maximise natural light. With only minutes to public transport, including a train station as well as light rail, the dwelling also offers a home office with separate entry for a home business or consulting room. 10 Grattan Street, South Mooring, Victoria, is also a four-bedroom, two-bathroom home, with a price guide of between $490,000 and $530,000. It offers a master bedroom with fitted robes and a full ensuite, as well as three additional bedrooms or with inbuilt wardrobes. The property also comes with two distinct outdoor entertaining zones, including a rear garden and courtyard. 84 Hill Street New Farm in Queensland is a larger five-bedroom, four-bathroom home with two car spots sitting on a 506 square metre block. It's being pitched as a resort-inspired luxury property spanning over three levels. The residence is enriched with elegant inclusions from many corners of the globe, including a carved Balinese front door, Moroccan handmade tiles and white Greek stone throughout. And lastly, the most viewed property listing this week was number 14 St George's Road in Turak in Victoria. This landmark residence is said to be one of Turak's most dignified homes with five bedrooms and five bathrooms. Apart from all the grand features you'd expect from a property of this magnitude, it also comes with an impressive Art Deco-inspired swimming pool and spa and a championship-sized tennis court framed by established hedges. Only being viewed but by private inspection, it comes with an asking price of between $46 and $50 million. And earlier today, I spoke with REA Group economist and Flaherty about this week's auction numbers compared to last week. Well, we are definitely seeing more properties up for sale this weekend. As you mentioned, last weekend we had the grand final. There are far fewer homes put up for auction, particularly in Victoria. We're now really starting to see that pick up. Now, in Sydney and Melbourne, auction value is up about 24 to 56% respectively. What's driving vendors to sell at auction? Look, there's a few factors. First of all, there's seasonality. People are more likely to sell over spring. At the same time though, we've seen a real shift in the sentiment of sellers. Sellers were feeling pretty negative about market conditions at the start of this year. Now they're exhibiting a lot more positivity. They're feeling much more comfortable and confident that if they bring their properties to market, they're going to get a good result. So speaking of buyer sentiment, have you seen an increase of traffic to the website? Absolutely, there are certainly more people looking, which is really good news for sellers. We have seen more properties come up for sale, but at the same time, buyer demand is also increasing in line with that. So we're still seeing good conditions for sellers, but it's also good news for buyers in the sense that there's more properties out there, which means more choice. Now, and let's talk a little bit about building approvals. New data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics came out earlier this week. What did it show? 
Well, we did see building approvals increase 7% over August. However, if we compare how many approvals were um, seen at the same time last year, they're down by around a quarter. There were 23% fewer homes approved. This is particularly problematic in the unit space. So we've seen a decrease in housing approvals by about uh, 18%, but when it comes to units, approvals were down 34% year on year. So this could not be worse timed if you think about the fact that our population is currently growing at record rates. Absolutely. We're in the middle of a housing crisis. Now, what factors are causing this fall in approvals? Look, it's just really difficult to develop right now. Costs have surged. Building um, and construction costs are still incredibly elevated from where they were. The speed at which input costs are rising has slowed, but they are still rising, which means that from a developer's perspective, a lot of projects are just not feasible at the moment. Now, moving on to our rental market. Now, we know that vacancy rates are very low. What effect has that had on rents? Well, vacancy rates just seem to be moving lower and lower. In August, we saw the national vacancy rate hit 1.1%. What that means is that it's driven up by um, confidence amongst uh, tenants, and that's pushed up rents. We've seen this particularly in the unit market. As I mentioned, um, approvals and development for new units have slowed. What we're seeing here is that because of our population growth, more renters coming into the market, more people wanting to live in inner city areas post COVID, that's driven a surge in demand for uh, unit rentals in inner city areas. And we've actually seen unit rents grow at double the speed of house rents. That's right. Well, this new research from REA shows that rents for apartments are rising faster than rents for homes. Why is that? Look, I think it comes down to where people want to live. So if we think about those inner city areas, that tends to be where you see a lot more units. Now, with more people coming into Australia, we know new migrants are most likely to favour living in or around CBD markets, just because that's where the jobs are. And so that's where we're seeing the fastest growth in demand for units. So if we look at Sydney, for example, we've actually seen unit rents grow at three times the speed of house rents over the last 12 months, and it is due to that. Now, what about rents in regional areas of Australia? Are they rising just as fast? They're not rising at the speed that we saw in the capital city areas. If we think about the COVID years, we saw astonishing rent growth in many of Australia's regional areas. That has now certainly cooled off. At the same time, though, we do have a shortage of rentals in most regional markets, same as capital cities. And so what that means is that if you are a tenant looking for a home in a regional area, it is likely that you're going to be paying higher rent than you were 12 months ago. It also means that there's probably a lot of other people out there looking at the same time. Now, Anne, just quickly, before we let you go, house prices, just broadly speaking, are they going up or down? Well, we've now had nine consecutive months of price rises across Australia. Um, in September, we saw almost every market record an increase in property prices. Again, this comes down to that shortage of supply. While we are seeing more properties come up for sale, at the same time, buyer demand is also increasing. Interest rates have now held steady for four consecutive months. It's boosting confidence. People feel more assured to take that step into the property market. And thank you so much for your time. My pleasure.